This is a very critical moment uh, that needs to be celebrated because globally and quite collectively, we've all come to understand the significance of oceans to our survival, to our livelihoods of all humankind, and to trying to fill the governance gap in the high seas. This needs to be certainly celebrated. However, we need to make this process and the outcome of the BBNJ process very much people-centred or people-focused. For example, what does the outcome document or the legally binding instrument mean to the coastal communities in Bangladesh or Senegal or the Solomon Islands in the Pacific, for instance? The most fundamental uh, principle, which is the principle of common heritage of mankind or humanity needs to be enshrined in the outcome document, the legally binding instrument. And what this enables us to do is A, is to have a meaningful and active participation of countries such as the least developed countries or the small island developing states in the negotiation process during the BBNJ, but equally so in the exploration um, uh, processes as well. Equally important is making sure there are not any unintended consequences of our economic activities in the high seas with specific focus on or on the coastal communities or countries. As we know it all, the high seas or areas beyond national jurisdiction and territorial waters or coastal waters are highly interconnected systems. Therefore, we need to recognize this and making sure our extractive and non-extractive activities in the high seas are not harming coastal communities. Therefore, IIED, along with other like-minded organisations and the governments that we work with, our ambition is to achieve or to drive home a, a more inclusive legally binding instruments uh, that works not just for those who have the political, financial or technological means, but for all humanity, particularly those vulnerable communities who are already struggling to cope with multiple climatic shocks.